Brandy Reams here from the Wakelet Boathouse. As one of the original Wakelet educators, it has been my honor to watch Wakelet evolve into the education paradise that it has become. I am so excited to have you join Randall Sampson and myself to talk about how Wakelet has shaped the educator that you have become. So if you are out there wanting to help guide, motivate, or spark some ideas for other educators, I hope that you will consider joining us. See you soon. Hi everybody, welcome to the Wakelet Boathouse. We are here today with Dr. Randall Sampson. And our special guest today is Mr. V. He is here to tell us all about this wonderful collection that he's created and what inspired him to make it. Uh, I am uh, Ed Vandesample, and I teach out in uh, Schaumburg District 54, which is one of the many uh, Chicago suburban schools. Uh, I've got, this is my 20th year actually, uh, the last seven being an acceleration coach, gifted ed resource teacher who uh, gets to work with a lot of kids in a lot of different grade levels. So stories are different every day, stories are different every period, and I, uh, I get to know a lot of kids, which is really nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, as we're looking at your collection here, just the picture itself uh, resonates, right? So that's one of the things that, that Wakelet has is uh, the ability to add a picture or a cover picture to your story. Um, so, you know, what is this picture and what do you want the, the reader or the person who's engaging with this collection to see? Uh, when, I, when I started putting this together, uh, my original intention was to... Um, stimulate my fifth grade uh, literacy acceleration group. And we were working on some civil rights stuff for the month of February. Um, and I was just kind of doing some surfing and I wanted to go a little bit above some of the stereotypical pictures. A lot of them see, I think, uh, you know, Rosa Parks in the bus or Martin Luther King giving speeches. Um, and this picture itself as a cover picture, I thought was a great shot because you see a lot of unity, uh, linking hands and arms. And it was nice when we introduced it to my kids, we just started here. And I just asked them simply, you know, what do you see? And, uh, you know, they were, they were picking at the signs and then they saw, you know, different guys and, and ladies linking, linking hands. You got different uh, backgrounds in there. It's not just all African-Americans. It was, it, was, it was a good start to our conversation, which was going forward into some of the activities that I've got uh, as we kind of get down further. Um, but it, it, I, I thought, you know, it was a pretty powerful picture to kind of set up at the beginning. And it led to them, you know, generating a lot of forethought, but also a lot of questions too, which was kind of good. Yeah, and what a great way to like for kids to start using the inferencing skills um, to really take a look at a picture and start to um, think about their own background knowledge as to how that will relate to the story that you're going to uh, to share with them. So let's take a look at some of the stuff that you have. Um, so I just kind of gave a quick intro. wasn't sure exactly how to process and and. It's continually evolved, actually, since I think maybe even you guys first saw it uh, with a little bit of tips thrown in there. Uh, I threw a quick intro video, but uh, we created a link to separate any kind of student input that uh, I've got them doing with Flipgrid or just some text uh, responses to some questions rather than kind of clogging up our main collection here. Uh, in my head, I was picturing it was going to be very interactive. Uh, there's some text, there's some videos, there's some pictures, and I was going to have the kids doing a lot of different things. And being it was my first one, I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to look, but getting some feedback, it made a lot more sense to kind of create a wakelet within a wakelet, which is what my student re response thing kind of looks like. Um, and so as I get down a little further, I wanted to start off somewhat chronological and give them a little bit of a history of the civil rights. So there's a little clip here, um, which it was... It was nice to have the kids just jump in and just and begin to listen because it was it was one of those very quiet moments for a couple of moments and you saw 100% attentiveness you know the kids were getting sucked into the screen listening to what was going on uh, it was just a quick video that I found on YouTube that I thought painted the picture pretty well without having to you know watch a 20 or 30 minute documentary um, and then I got a, do you want me to open up the PDF or just kind of touch base on it or? Yeah, if you think it's something that, that we need to take a look at just to kind of see what it is, um, that would be cool. But if you just 
want to say that this PDF is there, that, that also works. Okay. I mean, I, I found some different text sources. I think I got a few different from, uh, I don't know if you guys use commonlit.org. Uh, there's a lot of text out there. This was a pretty nice one that kind of gave a little bit more detail uh, that relates to that video about history of civil rights and the process. And then I found another image that sort of built off of our first one here. Um, and then what I've tried to do a little bit was kind of input my own directions with little um, Flipgrid videos, and then they've got their own response. So uh, within the responses, I'm gonna open this up here real quick and see if that works. The kids were responding to that initial video about the history of, uh, of the civil rights movement. I kind of gave them a three, two, one uh, activity. I wanted to know what three things they kind of learned about, two things that sort of surprised them, and then one thing that was just an all out shocker. And so there's gonna be a couple of Flipgrid videos at the top probably. So you have a collaboration link inside of the Wakelet that you're using for instruction so that you can gain feedback from your students along the way. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it was a almost, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's instead of using Google Classroom or, or filling up an inbox or doing a paper or pencil, I, was, I, I uh, shifted a lot of that over to this, uh, which is nice too, because then the kids are also seeing each other's responses. Right. Um, the, that's the, amazing. And that's an amazing way to spark classroom conversation as well. I mean, you have one kid that might not realize that another kid feels the way that they do, and then they are able to engage in a conversation that they might not have been able to have if they were to just write down an answer and turn it into you. And then I thought what was kind of cool, I came across um, a more modern video of what segregation meant with children today. And so we've kind of gone from like some of the history and some of the background, and I'll bring it into the 2000s. And so prior to them, uh, you know, viewing the video, I kind of wanted to probe at what they were thinking about uh, segregation, what they know, how they can define it. Um, if they if they felt that it still happened today, I was trying to see where they're at and what their experiences are and kind of their vision of what the world is now. And I wanted them to share that, uh, type, type some reflection down on a Google Doc and then share that with a couple of, you know, peers to get some feedback, almost like their own little conversation. And then I was gonna have them jump in and view the video. Uh, the video is a couple of minutes. It's a pretty interesting video, I thought. Um, talks about board of Brown versus board, talks about segregation, and it's, it's through the eyes of kids that are just like my, my class. And uh, I think that also brings home some of the meaning too, because it's not just black and white videos that we're seeing now. It's, you know, this could have been filmed down the road in our neighborhood or whatever neighborhood. And so they'll see this and then kind of reflect back on their conversation that they're sharing with Google Doc. And then at the very end, I'd like them to share that to me so I can kind of see the whole conversation and how that evolved. And while, and while they're doing this, obviously, you know, I'm kind of bouncing around and kind of coaching as I need to or facilitating as, as need. But um, it's been pretty nice to see them get soaked into the conversations though so far. I love how it puts the learning into their hands. You know, we're not just lecturing. We're actually giving them the materials to do the research and to dive into this. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 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 a neat topic. It's it's I think it's something that they're pretty interested in, mm -hmm. um, but haven't always had the opportunity to dive really deep, which is kind of nice. Yeah, um, and I like the fact that you took a topic and you kept it very narrow and went really, really, really deep with all of these resources and tools um, to where kids are really engaged, right? Uh, yeah. Versus we have multiple topics across. And we just kind of skim and touch the base. You took one topic and went really, really, really deep inside of your Wakelet collection. Oh, uh, thank you. You're almost deep diving into the waves, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's been, I mean, it's been a, I, and I, I kind of turned to this, I started looking at this about a year ago. There's a teacher in our district who does them all the time. And I've been following him on Twitter regularly. And I reached out to him a year ago and he kind of talked to me about it and talked about how easy it was and, sent me some examples that he had had utilized and created and I thought it was awesome and then time got away from me and a year later I'm like okay now is the time to jump right in you know and, and kind of get my feet wet and that's exactly you know a couple of weeks ago I sat down I was like now I'm this is I'm dedicating tonight to kind of dive in and see what I can do and 
it's a super user friendly uh, platform kind of walks you through to be quite honest a lot of it so if you had a chance to kind of tell teachers out there uh, how to get started in something like this in this kind of venture like you have um, what would be your suggestions um, I would say uh, I don't fear the unknown in this I really think it's it's a, a super you friendly product uh, platform I think it's an amazingly engaging piece that kids are gonna love um, I, I've treated it and I don't know if it's the right way or not but I've treated it as a piece that's continually evolving um, I think since you we had originally touched base it's changed probably half a dozen times I was talking with um, I forget the gentleman's name who's on I think he's on the wake Club board reached out to me actually too and he tweeted it out um, he, he's been phenomenal as far as sending me any kind of feedbacks or tips. Um, so I guess another suggestion would be, uh, it, obviously if you're on Twitter, you've got a lot of friends out there that's willing to help, uh, willing to brainstorm, real, willing to toss ideas, provide feedback. Um, it's 20 years ago when I began teaching, we were all in our own classroom sort of doing our own thing. We've moved into a PLT model, PLC model where we're working as a team with our grade levels and support staff and with social media, that PLC is blown up into like a universe, which is insane because I've been having conversations with you guys, which we're not even remotely close to a uh, gentleman that's out in the UK who's reached out and we've exchanged emails throughout the day about this. And uh, I mean, it, it, it made the whole process super comfortable. And I, you know, I, I, at first I was like, you know, I'm sorry if this is a really bad question or a silly question. And, you know, I was like, no, there's no, there's no dumb questions. It's about figuring it out and growing and, and going. So as a teacher, I think we're also lifelong learners. And this is just one more of those tools that kind of feeds into that. All right, guys. Well, you heard it here. Uh, one of the dynamic, innovative ways to use Wakelet uh, in your classroom to engage the kids. And I love the multiple uh, iterations that you have going on in this process. So uh, check it out, guys. And uh, we will see you later. Catch you on the wave. Nice talking to you guys. Uh, goodbye.